Oh, it's been one of them days. I um, <clears throat> I wanted to get a library item for this. Um, I solved my problem in uh, the previous video. Um, now, you remember me talking in the previous video, I was talking about the um, the problem with trying to turn off the soft start circuit. Once that the once that the main circuit was in operation so once the, once the RPM got up to a certain speed and there was enough voltage basically to trigger the opto isolator circuit which is down here once this circuit was in operation the soft starter was no longer needed in fact it was uh, detrimental to the actual optimum speed and regulation and timing and all that stuff so Basically, I wanted to have a soft starter that would get the uh, generator or pulse motor, whatever you want to call it, <coughs> up to a certain speed. Um, so this, uh, the idea was to simply to, to use the, the trigger coils, which are actually mounted, um, connected to these inputs here. So this is the on trigger circuit. So we've got our AC signal coming in and it goes through this capacitor which is a 4.7 microfarad so we just get a short pulse basically and that travels along this line. Um, let's just highlight the net, makes it easy to see it. Um, highlight that net, right so that net is green at the moment. So our signal is coming in and it goes to this divider network which is another 4.7k trimmer and um, that basically is for the main circuit which is down here so this basically drives the opto isolator now the problem is there's not uh, when you're at a standstill and when you first turn the thing on there's no voltage there's nothing there to, to do any timing or generate the pulses that will drive it so we need an, an intermediary starter basically so um, in order to get a starter, starter to work we needed to basically tap directly into that AC signal and use a single transistor which is now down here and I've gone back to the BC109 oh wow earlier on I was trying the BC109 and uh, it, it didn't look like it was going to going to work and uh, what's, so what's changed right what's changed is uh, DN2540N3 dash G and that's normally on right which means it's normally conducting a voltage so we basically put that in series with the collector of oh god uh, so we basically yeah, I've got my throttle up. I'll turn it back down again. Uh, I don't think I need it. Mm. So basically, we this will conduct the pulses that the BC109 is sending through because it will be pulling, it will be triggered, and it will pull the signal through this um, MOSFET, this tiny little MOSFET, which basically can only drive about 140 milliamps. I think it's 140 milliamps. I had the PDF up earlier. So that will basically pull the signal through this 10k and it will turn on our Q3 which is our BC557 or BC556 because they're, they're virtually the same except the one I'm using is higher voltage and that's the BC556. So that will, it will put basically turn that, turn that transistor on, give us an initial start and once that's uh, running I had the problem of not oversaturating the transistor and I didn't want to overdrive it or cause it to basically flatline I was in clipping and things like that and having problems well that's, that problem was solved simply because the signal that we're, we're going to be getting um, coming through this circuit up here, the green so the signal will come down, let's just change this to our highlighted net, so the highlight that net. So the signal's coming down on this green line, 
and it's turning on BC109 so BC109 is active um, as long as our uh, U4 is oops, wrong button so these two are active at the same time right now because we have our signal coming down uh, it's turning BC109 on which is sending the signal through this um, MOSFET which is also turning on our transistor over here so all of this circuit will be um, active at this specific time but <coughs> but um, once the um, once the voltage um, that's coming from our coil gets high enough to jump this LED which is over here once the voltage gets to that certain threshold point it'll be it'll be uh, limited by the fact that the LED in the optical isolator is, is going to limit the voltage and the current to the to the um, um, to the circuit because what will happen is uh, it will charge the voltage from this LED through this LED let's highlight this there now uh, highlight that there so the voltage now is coming from coming from through this LED through this resistor and it's going to charge up this capacitor here which is going to basically slowly charge with the pulses that are coming and that will basically turn off our MOSFET because it's normally on and it, it's turned off and the capacitor will keep it turned off because uh, it will hold the charge cause, and it's because it's a DC voltage that's coming from this LED this this normal illumination LED which is before the actual uh, infrared LED that's in the opto isolator so because that, that voltage the capacitor will be charging and it will hold that MOSFET in an off state and because it's off our BC109 down here is no longer be able to pass a signal through it to trigger the um, BC557 Q3 so because it's no longer able to trigger that and it will have to worry about that because the signal will now be coming from the main circuit so right our opto isolator is active and because our opto isolator is active it will turn on our latching circuit down here so the latching circuit will be turned on that will send a signal up through these lines here to this 10k resistor and that will also turn on the BC the Q3 uh, which it was previously been turned on by our BC109 which is no longer active because it's been turned off so that in theory is what should happen so now we're running on a time system where we have an on trigger and an off trigger so it will be a longer duration so the soft starter which basically provides a very short pulse of energy which is probably a few microseconds and it's very long at slow RPM is, is probably enough to get the thing started and once it's running uh, we will be on a governed um, because we're using an, ex an on coil and an off coil and because we're using two trigger coils um, from the rotor magnets themselves they'll basically time themselves so as the rotor passes the first coil the first on coil it will turn on and as the magnet moves away and the secondary uh, set of magnets is approaching it will turn it off so that works, that will work fine. Um, right, so going back over here, because the LED um, down here, as I was explaining, because it can only put, conduct about two and a half, what is it, three volts, whatever, uh, um, the voltage across this, through this resistor and um, across here will on this capacitor will never really get very high it will be just sufficient enough to keep that MOSFET turned off and because it's off the um, BC109 down here uh, we can't do a damn thing because it's no longer got a voltage on its collector so this collector has got no voltage because that's off 
but it will still receive signals through the 10k up here the signals will get exponentially larger and larger and larger um, because as, as it speeds up the circuit but the vo any voltage that's on this line will simply go in the, the base and out the emitter directly to ground but absolutely nothing can travel back up here because this MOSFET is off so it's not going to interfere with the circuit it's completely isolated now it's basically in its own little zone so if I get my little um, um, rectangle and I'll put a little box around my area uh, which I did earlier before and in I might actually I might actually leave that box in there actually just let me think I really need to adjust the thickness of this box because it's a little bit big so I'll look at the line thickness width 25 uh, so do I just turn it down to 20 is this the actual width of the line oh yes it is so let's go down to let's go down to 10 I don't want, why is everything out of proportion with this software right that's better it doesn't look so messy now <coughs> right so in this area I'm going to put soft start right so that's our soft start section so in that box um, and this is the disable section so uh, I could put a box around that as well but I think I'll just leave it uh, I'm just going to put I'm just going to put text next to it because I've got the name of what the component is um, so I'm just going to put some text which will be uh, main rpm disable I'll just do that and um, rotate and I'll stick that there so <coughs> right so I've got that in there um, I think that that will work so I'm going to make a circuit board anyway because um, I tell you this is getting it's getting kind of messy um, I mean I've got rid of them diodes I, don't need, I didn't need them diodes after I, I've been sat there thinking about this for a while uh, uh, you're going to laugh actually you're going to find this kind of amusing I was sat on the loo actually when I, it came to me it was that famous guy that sat on the was sat on the toilet and apparently he had a, he had a, uh, a Yugi Eureka moment apparently anyway so there's me sat there and I thought oh, hang on a minute I've got, the, I've got, the, got these MOSFETs and um, they're normally on how oh, can I use those? And I thought, yeah, of course I can use those. Um, so that's the idea. So it's a, it's actually an IC more than a MOSFET, really, because of the way it works. It's uh, yeah, I think they're, they're actually mentioned or listed as ICs. Now let me bring up the schematic a minute. Uh, I think it's going to go black on you again. Just a minute. Let me just yeah, it's gone black. Just a second. Uh, Why? Well, get this PDF up I didn't click it properly when I double click and I mean to double click it doesn't blow me well register mm -mm. right so uh, where is it uh, there it is right so can you see that yeah I think you can see that right okay so this is the end channel depletion mode vertical DMOS FETs and let me just zoom in a bit uh, what have I done oh wrong way I'm trying to move this scroll around the superplex DN 2540 is a low threshold depletion mode normally on transistor utilizing <coughs> utilizing advanced vertical DMOS structure and super text is well proven silicon gate manufacturing process blah 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 this combination produces a device with a look with a, a power handling capabilities of bipolar transistors 
out with a high input impedance and positive temperature coefficient inherent in MOS devices. Characteristic of all MOSFET structures, this device is free from thermal runaway and thermal thermally induced secondary breakdown. It's not going to be carrying any current anyway, but uh, the vertical DMOS specs are ideally suited to a wide range of switching amplifi amplifying applications where high breakdown voltages, high input impedance, low input capacitance and fast switching speeds are desired. Well, actually, I'll put your capacitor on there, so it's going to be slowing it down a lot. <laughs> but it's rated at 400 volt. Uh, our RDS on is 25 ohm, so that's okay. Um, 150 milliamp maximum. Well, I'm, I'm not even going to be using 10 milliamps. It's 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 going to last forever. So it basically is that one, this one here. So it's just a tiny little TO92. Uh, I actually got these by accident. I actually ordered some um, MOS, MOSFETs, uh, some small drivers, uh, three, four years ago or something, for a project I was building, and I, I didn't know until I got them that they were actually normally on. Uh, I should have read the PDF, shouldn't I? Well, anyway, so, and I thought, well, I'm not sending them back, they'll come in handy for something. And yes, these, um, they are coming in handy for something. Um, Oh, what's going on here? I'm trying to put... Right, so... Uh, right, so that's the specifications. Blah, blah, blah. It's, a, it's the 120 milliamp one. There's, there's, the three, there's three other packages you can get. Um, Gate to source off voltage. Let me just make sure I've got this right. I've got this in right. Gate to source. Yeah, that's right. So there'll basically be a voltage on this capacitor here. The gate is here. And so when this gate has a voltage and it will it will travel through the source to this through this capacitor and it will hold it in an off st off situation uh, I knew I'd got it right because there's that LED in, um, it's got a backwards LED there to protect it from reverse de <coughs> reverse spikes um, yeah you know what I mean um, back here <coughs> it's, there for, it's mainly designed for driving coils but the, the LED the diode that's facing upwards is not going to affect it it's not going to cause any problems to the circuit um, well, I hope it. Well, it, yeah, it shouldn't do anyway. I mean, if we've got a voltage coming through a pulse um, to normally turn this transistor on, this transistor will have to conduct downwards through this way. So, um, I, I know that sometimes you put a voltage in the base and it comes out both the actually it comes out the emitter and collector. So I have to look at that. I might have to stick a diode. Am I? Yeah, because this, it's got a diode in there, I don't want a signal um, going back the other way. If, it, if there's a diode in this MOSFET, I um, I don't want that a pulse to travel out of the transistor in the wrong direction and basically turn that transistor off when it's supposed to be on. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to stick a diode in here as well. Well, that's not that's not a big issue. Um, actually, I'll stick it over here. So let me just grab one. I'll grab another diode. I need to sort this out because I might forget about it later. So what we, what I need to do is move this up here like this and stick a diode. There. It can be just a 1N914. So that should prevent any problems because of that other diode facing the other way. Because BC109, you can pass a DC voltage into the gate, into the base, and it will come out both the emitter and the collector. So, yeah, I, I, I certainly, I mean, even if the transistor's not functioning as a transistor, it will still act like a, I mean, 
bridge rectifier basically will send a power out the collector as well as the, the emitter so I block that now because the only voltage that we really want to be coming is in this this anti-clockwise direction up that way we, would, we don't want anything going back because uh, when they put these diodes in these MOSFETs it's, it's to protect the device normally uh, so that's that side as well I mean I'm just going through this all in my, uh, as I'm talking because um, uh, it helps me to think it all through as well um, I came across some of my diagrams at one of the circuits I built what three or four years ago the H bridge and that and I was looking at it and I thought oh my god I can't believe I built that <laughs> it's, it's weird when you come across stuff you built ages ago and you think oh my god how the hell did I build all that but it's it's all it's all about a time isn't it as uh, oh, someone else on the internet keeps saying as it how do you eat, and eat an elephant you basically eat it about at a time that's what he said um, so when you're building something it kind of escalates you start off with something small you add it and then you understand it you can see the whole thing in your head and by the time you've finished you pretty much you see it simplified but then when you come back oh, two or three years later and look at it and you think oh my god how the hell did I manage to build all that <laughs> it's just weird <clears throat> It's quite daunting, actually. Um, right, so I'll just center that, save it. Uh, yeah, I tell you what was going on when I first started the stream. I was saying, "Oh, it's been a right crappy, horrible evening." I'll tell you why because I was trying to get this, I mean, footprint, this pattern for this MOSFET. Not this. This is this is a this is actually not the MOSFET that I really wanted I wanted the proper MOSFET and that's why I put these labels here because this isn't the right one it's it's the same footprint as you can see over here and the right hand corner over here it's the same footprint so that's fine but I'm using a tri footprint actually oh that's the point that this, this component I'm using might not have the diode I'm looking at a triad just a minute let me check does it actually have a diode in there? If it doesn't, I'd have to put another diode. Let me just check. Um, you see, I couldn't get the proper footprint because the flipping design spark software kept crashing up. Oh, it does have that diode in there. Look. Oh, so it does have. Uh, yeah. So that diode is in in this component. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, that makes sense because it says no applications normally on switches solid state relays converters linear amplifiers so they would have to put that diode in there because it was to drive inductances induct inductive coils um, so uh, just looking down here to see the, there's the waveform that's basically the waveform of it being normally on so the switching waveforms on test circuit you can build that to test it to make sure it's working and all that and, um, so So about just over 10, minus 10 volts. Oh, what's this? I'm looking. Oh, that's the input. Uh, right. I need to look at the actual. Now, what's the minimum volt? Turn on delay time. 10 max. What is that? 10 watt? Oh, it's nanoseconds. Turn on delay time, 10 nanoseconds. Rise time, 15 nanoseconds. That's pretty fast. I don't have to worry about that though. I don't need speed. Um, I want to know what voltage is required to trigger it though. Where's the voltage for that? It must be up here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 
get to source of voltage that's what I want to know minimum minus 1.5 hmm right so 3.5 volt max yeah well that's what that's great it's ideal because that's within the range of that that LED that's going to be supplying the voltage because I'm basically using the voltage across an LED and it's well within that range so as long as it's between 1.5 and 3.5 it's going to work fine and uh, it's ooh, 10 microamps, bloody hell, it doesn't use much current at all, so that's good. You know that capacity is charged up, it's going to basically stay off for ages. Um, unless I use a leaky electrolytic. Um, Drain to source leakage current is about one milliamp. Well, input capacitance is 230 peak of power. Well, <laughs> it would work pretty well in a radio circuit, this would actually. Yeah. Well, as long as it's not UHF. <laughs> Probably work all right in something like an AM equipment. Uh, reverse transfer capacitance. Up to 1 megahertz, frequency 1 megahertz. Typical one peak of power, five peak of power. Mm. Yeah, it's. I'm. I'm convinced that this is going to work. And it wasn't expensive. It was. A, it's a cheap component. It's not expensive. Uh, and that's it. If you want to look it up, a DN two five four zero. So that's that's what we're using here. Um. So these two aren't connected, these two here, but they might cross but they're not. So let's highlight that net. That's the one to the PC 109C. Right, so I think I think this is gonna work. I think I need to Soft start pulse basic. I just relabeled it a bit. It was alright what it was. Ah, uh, right. <coughs> Oh, I'm so tired. I haven't slept last night very well. Uh, so I've got to forward all these changes when I'm happy with it. I'm I'm just studying right now. But I told you I'd figure it out. I just have to think a while. And good thing about it is we're still getting a positive signal, so a plus signal, which is what I wanted for the trigger circuit, because I didn't want to intermix a positive signal with a negative signal. So we're, get, we're getting both positive signals now, which is what I wanted to begin with. Um, and that solves a whole bunch of other problems that we might have had with timing issues. Um, There's something I've missed out. I don't know if you, I don't know if you can see what it is, but I've missed something out.
Actually, um, yeah, I have missed something out. But it's an AC thing that's coming in, so I don't have to worry too much about the fact that I've missed the biasing resistor out. Um, because it's an AC signal and it's going to be balanced out anyway it's going to receive a positive pulse then it's going to go negative then it's going to go positive then negative so as long as there's enough voltage coming in to turn the BC109 on that's fine It'll, anything above 0.7 volts is, is sufficient so I seriously doubt that I need a bias resistor on that because these coils are self energizing I mean they're going to be sending their own voltage through the, through the capacitor and through this resistor here so yeah I haven't really missed anything out because it's an AC signal and um, the reverse signal will simply um, when, when the voltage is going backwards up, up the pipe so to speak it will simply draw it through the ground which is a common ground anyway now so it's a common ground with the um, AC ground so if I click on my naught volts and um, and just highlight that net again highlight that net right so that's my ground in blue and you can see it's all over there the AC ground is also um, in blue right now so my common ground is so it's all common ground so yeah uh, I haven't really missed anything out I thought I had actually but I, I had to think a minute but it's going to get its own DC signal, it's, well, its own AC signal. So I don't really need to bias that. But you know, I might stick a trimmer in there just in case I do need to adjust the biasing on it. Um, where the 10K is. Um, I could stick a pot in here, a trimmer pot to adjust it. Viber resistor, Viber resistor. I can't, I can't get the words out tonight. I really can't. So let me see. Um, am I going to have room? I think I should have. So if I get another one of these. And if I stick it up here, I can. I don't want 4.7 though. I want it to be. I want it to be pretty high because these BC 109s are very sensitive. You don't need to drive them with much current. You don't need much voltage at all. So I'm going to stick 100k. Oh, I think 100k. Just to give it a little bit of bias in. A little tad of DC bias won't kill it. And what I'll do is I'll stick that on the other side of this resistor, on this other side of this 10k, so that it basically, because um, this capacitor here is that's the plus side, so it would only have to tap onto this leg here to send a bit of bias this way but the bias won't go the other way because of the capacitor being there the DC won't get through that way and this is AC side anyway this side is AC and it's going to be alternating this side is the DC side but it's going to receive a, an AC signal anyway um, and I want to isolate it a little bit so I don't want too much feedback going back into the I don't want to send too much AC into the DC signal circuit either because it'll interfere with it. But with a 100k trimmer part, I don't think I've got a problem there. So let's just connect this leg to. There. I'm going to bring this down a bit. Move that over there a bit. Right, 
right. So it's it's it's, couple, it's better to go and sew this resistor in that capacity. So I don't need to put another <coughs> I don't need to put another M stop end stop resistor anywhere there, which is a good thing because I've already got this one here and this capacity is decoupling me on the other side. Uh, so what will that do when you first power it up? Well, when you first power it up with DC, um, there'll probably be the, probably be a uh, uh, small amount of time for this capacitor to to to, to, just to charge a little bit. I mean, it'll be it'll be grounded through that coil. So what will happen is the capacitor is flat. Uh, um, we'll have a DC site voltage and look, uh, actually I've got another capacitor up here as well that's reversed, that's the same way around um, I probably don't need that one let me see, do I need that one? yes I do need that one because that's going to provide that's going to double up my voltage from the coil coming in because it's going to flip flop and it will double my, double my voltage basically um, to drive my main circuit so I'm going to have to leave that capacitor there so do I actually need this one here probably I don't no I probably don't I can take this one away I'll just delete that one I mean, I'll just tidy this up. No, that's it. But I don't need to, I don't need two of those capacitors in series with it because they're effectively in series. So now this this trimmer is connected through that resistor. So we're, we're isolated in the fact that um, we have this other capacitor up here. So we don't have to worry about extra decoupling on there. Uh, having two in series was a bit silly really. Um, but that's because I'd, I'd been a little bit too overzealous with, with you know, my safety side of looking at it and that, not trying to blow anything up, trying to avoid that. Um, right. Now let me just check everything else you see I, I'm, as I'm going along I'm, I'm noticing things which need to be fixed before I can go further on you see uh, also when this uh, MOSFET is turned off when this MOSFET's turned off, the normal circuit that's going to be operating down here, the normal, oops, the normal circuit down here, right, that's latching, uh, trigger on, trigger off, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's going to send a, a, a pull down signal on this line here, through this 10 gate, oops this 10k which turns this transistor on oops wrong button um, so all this will be active this all this area but because the um, because that MOSFET here is off or in normal use it's not going to interfere with the circuit in any way it's got a very high in, input uh, very high impedance when it's turned off so that won't interfere with that whatsoever, so that's good. Because it'll be as if this resistor wasn't even there. No, sorry. No, it will that resistor is the neg is the pull down for the emitter base on the PMP, so it will be that will be there. But it'll be as if this and this out there, that's what I was trying to say these two effectively will be ignored because there's nothing there won't be a circuit through here it'll just be dead so the soft starter only works when you first power it up basically uh, uh, I think I've got it sussed uh, finally anyway I'm going to end the stream now because uh, you know what I've got you know what I've got to do next I've got to 
I'm going to follow the design changes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I've got all this root in again. I've got all this mess to deal with. Right, let's just try and bring some order. I don't know if you want to watch me mess around with all this lot. Um, did it all once earlier when I was doing it. And so for the moment, I just don't know where everything's going to go. Let's just bring that down here. Oh, that one should be rotated. Uh, actually go around again that wants to be rotated uh, wants to be like that so, um, let's bring this down here a minute that wants to be, that's it I'll leave it off the edge of the board for a minute because I'm still sorting everything out I lost a connection somewhere, where's that gone from? Oh wonderful. Um So this one wants to be that way around. Wants to be over here somewhere. Top here to the board until I get sorted out. Such a mess. Um, untangling all these nets. I'm just going to root a few things. Ah. Well, I need to get that. Uh, That's why I was trying to root a few things to see where I am. Uh, this transistor is going to have to be flipped over. Do that, root that, rotate. This is the BC109. So that's N0431, N0431. That's basically all the way around. Oh my god, this isn't working. Hang on a minute.
Hmm. Oh, I know what I can do. All two of that one. That one can go all the way around. Net oh oh four three one is that one. So if I manually oh. Huh. Huh. I'm not too worried what it looks like at the moment. I'm just I'm just trying to work out where I can put stuff really yeah this, oh, this has to go around uh, I don't know right? this is going to be a massive track oh didn't work anyway that's not a vault that's not a vault so Try rooting that again. No, it won't. So, let me double click it. It's a massive track, that one. I need to thin it out. Uh, style. I need to change the style to oh change the segment mode to three right I'll sort it out later that so basically our trim pot can't get through to there now so the trimmer needs to be it needs to be on its side this resistor wants to be move it out of the way a minute if I move this over here if I can just grab this, bring it down here. That'll work. I'll sort this big truck out later. Oh, it's such a mess. This one,
Hmm. Actually, this can go there. Um, I think I know what I can do. Good thing these numbers are actually on the top silk screen, they're not actually on the board. Because I'm connecting some things to these ICs, it's causing me all the problems. Um, that resistor is only connected to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that resistor. I'm going to bring it up here, and I'm going to stick it right there. I hope I can get it in. Auto route that. Oh, stupid thing, it's gone all cock out. Just gonna do it manually. <sighs> right, then I can route this end through this lot. Uh, let's see. It might route itself. No, it didn't. So that is next. Oh, uh, forty-four. It doesn't seem to be able to negotiate all the way. It's because of these great big thick tracks. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the style of this track to a thinner track there. I'll try auto auto routing again. No, it still doesn't like it. Let's move it a bit that way. <coughs> Still doesn't want to go. Right, change the track segment mode again to fill it. I'll have to sort this out in a bit, it's just, just, I want to be all the way down to the base, or oh, the gate should be. Uh, come up here. Optimize the nets. There, that yellow line disappeared. Because we've got it connected there now. And I'll just move this around a bit. Ah. Okay. 
We've still got a route up here. Oh, I've got another connection up here. Uh, where does that want to go? Down here, down here. Down there. Well, I can do it if I move this lot around a bit. I think it does that, it flips inside out. Oh, it's done it again. Stupid thing. Just bend it a bit more. I'll bring a track down from here. Oh, start again. free mode oh I know what I can do I'll just cancel that a minute this one can be rerouted ah I don't like it ah oh, this one could be moved after we sort this out Although it when the plants start to come together. Right, can I alter it this automatically? Let's try it. Oh yeah, it's done it. Right, I have to just tidy that up a bit. Uh, Oops, wrong end. Let's check that. This one was sorting out a bit. Yeah. I want the other mode. Um, I'll try mitre. No, I don't like mitre. Fill it again. That worked. I just need to move this line a bit. It's a bit too close. Uh, I'll probably go after like the bar bigger. Yeah, I'll do that. Don't mind having a slightly bigger board.
groups start to click together. Um, now we've got a problem here. This one wants to be connected to that resistor. No, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Bring this down. Flip that around. Flip that one around. Why will that connect? Net zero four forty. Net zero four. It's a small gap. Come on, you can jump that for Christ's sake. I'll do it manually. Stupid thing. Ah. <sighs> Right, and this one should root now. Huh. N O four three two. N O four three two. Huh. Right. We're all connected up. Do so I have to tidy this lot up and think about if I can move something? Because, like I said before, we need to get tracks as short as possible, and I've got some pretty long tracks there. But I can't, if, without moving everything around and moving these octo isolators down here, I just oh, I don't want to do that. Anyway, it's not important. We're not dealing with our air and radio frequencies. Let's just have a quick. Let's just say that. Let's check for errors. Oh, I've got some dangling trucks again. Uh, three errors this time. Component to component error. Oh yeah, they're, they're too close. So that basically wants to be a bit that way a bit. Uh, 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 I'm messing this up, let's just auto route that again. Um I can move a bit that way. Check errors again. Just two errors now. And where are they? Oh. LED. Right, it's that resistor stuck up here. Try it all to ruin. No, I remember now why I didn't do that all to ruin. Right, I'll leave that as it is. Um, hmm. I think I probably should have just one error now. Yeah, one error. And that's the dangling track now. I have no idea where that is. Oh, actually, I have an idea. Just a minute. Flares. Let's just. Hide that. Um, hide the top silk screen. Uh, 
long sort of screen documentation let's go to error I'm up to see it now there it is ah that's where you've been hiding all right right oh the DT <laughs> the DT right I'll just reroute that I'll turn on my silk screens back on again let's scan again No errors. Finally got rid of all my errors. Just looks a mess at the moment. <clears throat> Very messy. Uh, I need to redo this one. Let me just see if I can read this is all auto route now. Let me Oh yes it did! That's better. It wouldn't work earlier. Now it now it works. Right. I'm going to look up a 3D model. My god, this is starting to look like my H-bridge. Really complicated. And everything's upside down on it. Let's have a look upside down. Right, let's go that way around. It's all reversed. There's the BC... Oh, there's a cute little BC-109. Oh, right there. Mind you, it's the wrong colour, it should be silver. Um, mind you, you can't get them in plastic packages, I suppose. I have a bit of a fondness with BC109s because when I first started learning electronics, it was one of the very first transistors I ever used. So, it's kind of like a little baby. <laughs> you only get attached to something. Um, right, that looks pretty neat actually. It doesn't look too bad. Oh my god, I'm getting these weird headaches. Some, somebody's giving me a psychic attack, I think. Um, somebody watching me on YouTube right now is sending me bad vibes. get my phone running and see if, I can, if there's anyone trying to talk to me because I'm not monitoring the chat you see uh, I couldn't get this to work yesterday, so I'm going to give it another shot. Give me a minute.
process of it telling you this, what up, and think about it, and move something. I can't seem to, uh, like I said before, we need to get a track session. I can't seem to get the chat on here. I just don't understand why it doesn't work. I'll try stream labs. Stream labs. Mm. I thought might give me my chat. Right. Oops, I dropped it down there. Where is it chat anyway? Oh, there we go, I've got it, finally. So I'm monitoring the chat on Streamlabs. Streamlabs. Can't say the word. Change that track. Oh, it's ground, it's okay. Um, let me tidy these up a bit. Take that segment out. Take that segment out. I'm going to take that one out. I'm going to Oops. Bad track, and I want to be. free. That's it. So I finally managed to get that um, spacing corrected for the um, I finally got that spacing fixed so that when I'm doing the copper fill it's not overkilled and the gaps too close together and all that so I'm going to run that in a bit. Is that normal? It is. Um, so what I can do is I can make this smaller. Because the copper fill will take care of the gaps and the thickness of the ground area. So I don't have to worry about that being too um, too fat because it will get thickened up later. So I'm going to bring this down a bit. These pads are always too small. Oops. 
that's no good. Shotting out. Uh, with, uh, oh, I'll just, oh, I'll just friggin' leave it. These, these, t these transistors, these little transistors, though, they're such a pain. They, they always put the pads too close together. Well, these tracks can be seen a little bit. Where are we at at the moment? Um, we are 0.4 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is a oh, wrong button. I'm going to go to 0.5 millimeters. Style two. Huh? Oh, come on. I'll start one point two. Mm. I'll go a bit sick on this one. Some of my pads, <coughs> my actual pads on here need to be bigger, so can I change all these pads all at once? I'll, I can't remember now, can I? Pad, 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 pad. I can't remember now if I can change these all at once. Style. 
Is it Alt Enter? Um, is it one point two? Oops, wrong one. That's no good. I want try to start one point one. Yeah, that's the one. So yeah, I can change them all at once. Um, If you put me handy, I've probably got a bunch more to do. Yep. Was it 1.2 that one? Oops, no, that's not that one. Uh, it was style two. That was it. Oh no, that's not it. That's even worse. Oh, I've got no hole. Um, what is it? Style. Style one. Let's try that. Oh yeah, that's the one, I think. Right. And that oh, look I've got room at this end of the board as well, I can move that, so I'm gonna reroute that. Oh for some reason it just went back again. I'm just gonna clear that a minute. Bad. Uh, that's a bit close down here. Oh, I don't really like that. Let's go and check that. Uh, Looks different on here for some reason. Where is that? Oh, R13. Right, check R13. Oh, that looks alright there, that's weird. And then we've got R13. Hmm, 
sobre. Okay, so I want to fill the, the bar with copper to the ground, so I want to be on the not bolt. So, okay, let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's weird. It, some thermal spokes. That I don't really need to worry about that. Oh, it's not going to get hot. <laughs> now, the areas that aren't filled is where it can't get to those areas because there's two the tracks too close together. This, this, I've got a safety gap. Mm. Uh, let's check the 3D model. So the next thing will be to print it out on a piece of paper and find a suitable piece of copper that will fit on. Because I've actually measured it, but it won't be that big. I think I only I widened it really more than I elongated it. Uh, basically down this way. So. See that? Oh, that resistor number is moving. Um, where is it? Hang on. It's it's right above, right in between those two opto isolators. So. Um, Ah, it's that, that resistor number one speed. Uh, oh. I'll stick it there. So it will. Oh, that's better. Ah, oh. my other resistor numbers disappeared as well. Where's that one gone? This one here. Can't see where the number is. This one here. I'll go back and check it. It's on the right hand side of IC1. IC1. Ah, there you are. Right. I'll stick it down here. Go.
I don't know if I did I actually get the chat working on here. Oh, it's gone again. Well, of course, there was no way in the chat anyway. Anyway, I'm going to end the stream now. Uh, all done, I think, for now. Anyway, thanks for watching.